finally time to talk about the LG G4. Now, let's just start off with the screen. It's a 5.5 inch quantum IPS display. So it's, 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 an, it's using IPS technology, but the color reproduction is ridiculous. And also the contrast ratio, and this is 1500 to one. That's not a dynamic contrast ratio. That's the contrast ratio. Uh, also, they're trying to adhere to the DCI standard, which is the same standard they use for motion pictures. The idea here is to give you the exact same uh, color right here on your screen, as you would see on like, you know, a movie or a big screen TV or a big screen, uh, you know, cinema experience. So that's really awesome. It's 1440p pixel uh, density is 538 pixels per inch. Now, as far as the brightness go, sometimes outside, I noticed it could, you know, it could have been a little bit brighter outside. That's one thing I noticed. It was better than most, but it's funny when you get something like this in your hands and it's like supposed to be the best, you're like, well, it's, it's not the best in this one area. So out, outdoors in bright light, it's not the best I've ever seen, but it does a pretty good job. And in low light, I did not have to install any additional apps to get it dim enough. Sometimes when I have the, all the lights off, I want it to be extremely dim and I have to install, you know, some program to allow me to go into negative uh, dimness, I suppose. But this one goes, you know, it goes really, really dim when you turn it down. So that's nice. The rest of the specs, well, this thing is ridiculously fast. It's got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 808 Hexacore. That's a six core, you know, it's running at 1.8 gigahertz, 64 bit. That's really nice. As far as the speed goes, it is slightly faster than my OnePlus One. And here's the Antutu benchmark. As far as 3D goes, it's also very good in 3D. Uh, we ran 3D mark. Here's the score on the screen. You guys can see it. As far as the battery life, 3000 milliamp hours. And that's enough for casual use all day long heavy use like video and stuff for a few hours, you should be able to go most of the day with this. Other things about the inside, uh, we've got three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gig ROM on the inside, and um, that's not all gonna be usable by you guys because the, you know, the OS and everything is on that. So here's the interesting thing, and the thing that really sets this apart from a lot of the competition. It does have the SD card slot, and the back does come off, which is nice, and I'll show you that in just a second. But uh, you can put a you know a mini SD card in here, and it'll support up to two terabyte SD cards. Those are not even out yet. I think 512, maybe one terabyte, if really expensive. But you guys can put a lot of storage in here, and that sets it apart from some of the other devices out there. As far as the connectivity goes, 802.11bgn and AC, uh, Bluetooth 4.1. Uh, it does support NFC, GPS A. Let's see another thing that's kind of weird. It's USB 2.0 for a flagship like this, I would have expected USB 3.0 or type C or something like that, but you know, it's only USB 2.0. It would have been nice to have it, especially because you have that huge memory card for transfers and that sort of thing. Another kind of interesting thing about this is it actually has a radio tuner on the inside. So a radio tuner could be kind of handy, I suppose. I don't use them that much. Uh, if you guys saw the Barnacles video, he, he had a pretty good use case scenario going to the gym and tuning in you know, with whatever's on the TV, if they have a radio station, you can use this to tune into that. Now let's talk about the camera. And uh, after that, I'm gonna show you around the phone, but the camera is something that they really wanted to be special. And they really wanted it to compete with a lot of the other cameras out there in the market. So on the back here, we have a 16 megapixel uh, camera. It's an F1.8 uh, aperture. So it is a small camera bump. It's not that bad, it's, it, but it does have a small camera bump right there on the back. Uh, the sensor size is one two sixth of an inch, so decently small uh, sensor size. But I think the thing that uh, really is nice about this is the software. The camera software is really ridiculous. You can do a lot with it. You can change it. If you put it into like manual mode or whatever, you can change the white balance. You can change the shutter speed. Um, you can control just about every element of the image. And it also shoots raw. So if you wanted to you know, shoot a JPEG, whatever, but raw will allow you to go in and change the white balance after you've shot the, you know, the, after you've shot it, it also captures a lot more information. So you'll be able to brighten dark areas uh, and, and without losing color information and that sort of thing, you'll be able to, if, it, if it's overexposed in some areas, a lot of times you'll be able to bring down the light and be like, oh, the detail is coming back and you can't do that with a JPEG. So it's really nice that they've given us raw support here. As for the video, it does 4K. Um, it also does a 1080, of course, but it'll do super slow-mo and not super slow-mo, but it, it does slow-mo. There's a slow-mo mode that comes with the app. It looks kind of cool. It does 720p at 120 frames per second. Here's a shot of the dog flying down the stairs, you know, so it does, it does a decent job with that. Now, the one thing I, I, I found is that, uh, you know, I installed a different app to, for, for the video and you can change the bit rates and that sort of thing, but I haven't played with the, the, you know, the sensor fully and the camera fully to see exactly what I could do. I was able to push the bit rate farther than the, the stock bit rate for 4K. And you can also change the, um, 
you know, the frame rates and that sort of thing. I'm, if anyone's curious, I use Cinema FV5, and that's a decent program that gives you, you know, several different options. But I didn't find it to be that much better than the, the camera that came with it. And I certainly think that the camera that, as far as the camera software, not the video software that comes with this, is just really freaking good. On the other side here, we have an 8 megapixel um, camera facing you. Hmm. Too bad. Room's a little messy. Whatever. We turn this down today, and uh, this is just a quality sample of uh, the camera. So, yeah. It does an okay job. Both of these cameras I found to be sort of mediocre and low light, um, not the best. The algorithm and the, the, the software algorithm for, for reducing noise is okay. It produces a, a very film-like grain, which I thought looked nice. But even in situations where it was daytime, like, you know, it was one in the afternoon and we had lots of window light coming in, I was having a hard time getting a sharp picture of something because of, of my hand shaking around. So I'd have to raise the ISO, which you can do in the app, but that adds more grain. So slightly frustrating um, to see that the low light performance is not like insanely good, but it's also understandable because the sensor is so tiny. It's better than most again, but it's one of those things where, you know, it's one of the best phones ever right here in my hand. But the camera is not the best camera ever. It's pretty damn close, but you know, I want I want it to be amazing in low light. That's the main thing. Also, the videos in low light did produce a, a decent bit of noise. This is, uh, you know, in the living room, just the dog running around in very low light. Um, we have you know, lamps and lights on, but you know, uh, it's gonna need to be color corrected as well. So one of the coolest things about the camera is the gesture control. Like with the front camera, you can have it, you know, you can have it start recording uh, using gestures instead of having to reach up and do things. It, it's pretty easy to, to use. And then uh, you can also set up the cameras um, to respond to phrases like cheese or uh, whiskey. That was a lot of fun. So you just hold the camera up. You don't have to fumble around and get to the button, which is always extremely awkward and cumbersome. And also there's no buttons on the side here, so you can't use the volume button to press the picture. The volume's cleverly placed right here on the back. So. All right, let's try this. I can say cheese, smile, whiskey, or kimchi, or LG, or whatever. I'm taking a bunch of pictures. All right. Whiskey. Whiskey. Let's see if it knows what a southern accent's like. Whiskey. It did it. It sure did it. <laughs> All right. You guys ready to just take a look at the actual phone? Well, come over here, and let's just get down to business and look at the phone. Also, now you guys are looking at the phone. Uh, you can see on the bottom we have uh, software buttons here and it's kind of interesting because take a look at the, all the way at the bottom there we have a large area down here that in hardware buttons would have worked if you're going to put I, I think that the screen should be all the way to the edge if you're going to have this much room on the bottom but whatever and also on the top here we do have a bit of a bezel but that's where the camera goes so yeah i still think i, I do prefer hardware buttons but that's whatever it gives me more screen space and i feel like i'm getting ripped off right here because those things are down on the bottom no why are they there Anyway, click here and it brings up all your active apps, just like, you know, it's Android 5.1. So you can click on dual window now and it'll let you pick an app to go to one window and then let's pick another app to go to the other window. Let's just put Chrome down there, whatever. And there we go. We have two different windows going on now. We can just resize these things. Hey, neat. Play stuff, whatever. So that's kind of cool. Go back to the home page here, show you what else they've done. Now you see there's an extra row of icons right here. This is, um, something called Q slide. Where's that button at? Right there. Turn it on and off. If you, if you don't want it to be there, you don't have to have it. And also this gets really nice and dark, like ridiculously nice and dark. Quite, quite enjoy that. Anyway, with, as far as Q slide, Q slide goes, you can go in and edit what you want to be there. Lots of different options. Another thing that they've added here is their smart bulletin screen, just different stuff. And you can go on to their website and download more stuff if you like. Um, it's a bit too LG for my taste. I'm more of a vanilla Android type, but you know, some of it could be useful, I suppose, like the, uh, the LG health business and whatnot. So schedule the calendar uh, could be pretty cool as well. Oh, there's a dev team hangout going on. Oh, that was, that was last week. So cool. There's the, the weather app that comes with it. That's on there. And then I've installed a few other things myself. I feel like the grid could be a little bit tighter, but that's why I've installed Nova and I'll be using that on my own time, you know? And then here's the way they've done their app drawer. They've separated apps and then widgets up here at the top. So it's it's a decent implementation, you know? Uh, maybe not quite as full featured as some things you can do with, you know, different ROMs and whatnot, but not too bad and not too clu cluttered. I mean, there, there are a few things like the LG Smart World and 
some of the stuff like that. Also, this is not the stock wallpaper. I couldn't deal with it, so I got rid of it. Um, but yeah, there's a decent amount that you can do with it. Now let's go ahead and take the back off. I've turned on the flashlight on accident. It's a little bit dark, but right there is a little spot where you can just take the back off. So there you can see the back is off, uh, battery right there, and then there's where you can install your SD card uh, and also your SIM chip. And I love the fact that you can take the back off of this thing. That's really nice. Now, one thing I, I do not like is the the back here. It's, um, it's a, I guess it looks like metal, but it's plastic and it is so slippery. You can get a leather version. It's a little bit more expensive. Spend the extra money because this version is basically like you're gonna replace your phone. You're gonna have to get a case for it or something because this is so slippery. I've dropped the phone like eight times just trying to like pick it up off the desk and then I'll drop it. As far as what do I think about this phone, I'm gonna have to take it out and use it as a daily driver a little bit more, uh, use the camera a little bit more, but I, the features are great. Um, uninstall some of the, the, the apps that are on there that you don't want. And if you're okay with the price, the best, the, basically the thing, if you're okay with the price, then it, it's a good phone. Uh, it's not that much faster than some of the phones that are, you know, like the Nexus, uh, I mean, not the Nexus, like some of the Nexus, yeah, the Zen phone, and also the, the OnePlus One, and then we've got the OnePlus Two coming out maybe soon. So it's not in that price range. It's a little bit more expensive, but it does have, you know, more interesting features like the ability to use up to a two terabyte SD card. And just the screen is unbelievable. Best screen that I've ever seen. That's how you turn it on. You double tap it and then you open it like an egg. And that's how they don't get sued by Apple. So there you have it, LG G4. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. 